Hey everybody, I felt like creating a video on arrays of strings and how they work in C. To be honest, working with strings in C is kind of a pain in the ass, but we gotta learn how to deal with them. In this demonstration, let's create a string. Normally, we would declare a type of character. Let's name the string fruit. Equals, then within double quotes, pick some fruit. I'll just pick an apple. A string is really just an array of characters. We can store more than one string by using a 2D array. We need two sets of indices. Within the second set of straight brackets, we need to specify the size. What's going to be the maximum number of characters in each string? Let's say 10. Then any values we enclose within a set of curly braces. Then we can comma separate each string. I'll add a few more fruit. Banana and coconut. Let's rename fruit as fruits. And there we go. We have an array of strings. Conceptually, it's very similar to a 2D array of characters. I've already typed this out. They behave very similarly, but with a 2D array of characters, all the data is stored in contiguous blocks of memory. With an array of strings, each of these strings can be at different memory locations. But conceptually, they're the same. To display the elements of an array of strings, you could use a for loop. We'll say int i equals 0. We'll continue while i is less than the number of elements within our array. Currently, there's three. There's a better way to calculate that, which we'll get to in a moment. Increment i by 1. We're going to use printf to display a string. We need a format specifier of %s for string. A new line. We're going to display our array of fruits at index of i. This should print each string in our array of strings. We have apple, banana, coconut. Or if you would prefer, we can separate each with a space. Apple, banana, coconut. With our for loop stopping condition, it would be a lot better if we were to calculate the size of the array, rather than just hard code a number here. Let's determine that. Let's create an int of size equals get the size of our array fruits, use the size of function, pass in our array, divided by one of the elements, size of fruits at index of zero. Then we'll have this for loop run while i is less than three. Again, we get apple, banana, coconut. If we were to add new strings to our array of strings, the size will update. Let's add a pineapple. Pineapple. Then run this again. Apple, banana, coconut, pineapple. Or a lemon. Apple, banana, coconut, pineapple, lemon. By calculating the size of our array, we can use that with the for loop and loop that many times. Now, here's an exercise that we can work on. I'll arrange our array so it represents rows and columns. Think of each string as a row and each character as a column. We'll use two indices to change some of the letters around. For example, let's say I would like to replace the A in Apple with the E. Well, we would access our 2D array of fruits. There's two indices. For the first row, that would be the first index. That would be row 0, then the column number, column 0. Let's set that to be a character of E. Then we're going to change this last letter, the E in Apple. Again, we need our 2D array, fruits, there's two indices. We're in row zero, column, let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, column four. We'll set that character to be an A, a capital A. And let's see the output. There we go. We've swapped two of the letters around using indices. Apple is now Epla. Let's do this with the others for practice. We'll switch the B and banana with the last A. I'll copy these two statements, paste them. Now we're in row one. 
row one, column zero, then row one, column zero, one, two, three, four, five. We'll replace the B and the A. Column zero is A, column five will be B. Then we get Anadb. I think that's how you say that. Then coconut. We're in row two. Row two, column zero. That will be a T. Then row two, column, let's count it. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. That will be a capital C. Oops, I miscounted. That should be six. Coconut is now Tokonuk. I thought that might be some good practice. Here's an exercise. We'll create an empty array of strings and a user is going to type in the input. This will be an exercise. A user is going to type in some names. We'll start with a single string. A string is an array of characters. We'll name this name. It's an array, an array of characters. Set it equal to, I recommend initializing all string arrays. Set them equal to zero. That will effectively clear them out so there's no garbage values from a previous program. But we do have to set a size. I'll just say 25 characters for the maximum size. Now, if this is an array of strings, we'll need two indices. We need two sets of straight brackets. If this array is going to be empty, we do need to set the number of rows. Let's say that we can store three names. We have an array of strings. It can hold three names, and each name has a maximum size of 25 characters. Since this is an array of strings, let's rename name as names, because it can hold multiple names, not just one. Now we're going to get some user input. Later on in this topic, we'll be using a loop. We'll start with accepting three names without using a loop, just to keep it simple, but we'll use a loop later. Let's use printf for a prompt. We'll ask a user to enter a name, colon space. We'll use fgets because fgets ignores any white spaces. Now, normally we would type the variable name here, but we need an index number because this is an array of strings. Names at index zero, that will be the first. We need the size of this element. Rather than just typing in 25 like this, I'm going to use the size of function, get the size of this element, names, but we also need an index number, names at index zero, then stdin for standard input. Just to remove the new line character from within the input buffer, normally we would take our variable, in this case names, use a set of straight brackets. Previously in the series, we've been using string length, the string length function, the string length of names minus one, and setting this equal to a null terminator character. But since this is an array of strings, we have to list the index number. With names, we'll add zero, then when getting the string length of names, we need the index number two, zero. And if we're working with the string length function, we do need to include the following import, include string.h. All right, let's print our name. We'll use printf. We're displaying a string. I'll add a new line, display our array of strings at index zero. Currently, we'll just have one name filled in. Enter a name. I'll just enter SpongeBob. Pick whichever name you would like. And we get SpongeBob. We've entered one element into our array of strings. Let's copy the snippet of code and paste it twice, but change the indices around. Replace any instance of names index zero with one, because that's the next element. Then with the next section, we'll do two names at index two. Later on, we'll be using a loop, don't worry. Then we'll print names at index of zero, one, then two. Now we can enter three names in. Enter a name, I'll pick SpongeBob, then Patrick, Squidward. And here's our three names, SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward. Okay, now let's use a loop. We can condense a lot of this code because we're repeating ourselves. We'll cut these two blocks of code. Write a for loop to cycle three times. Int i 
equals zero will continue while i is less than three, because that's how many rows we have. But we could calculate that later, which we will. Increment i by one. During each cycle of this loop, we're going to do the following. Let's copy this whole paragraph of code, then stick it within the loop. Replace names where index is zero with i. i is going to increment during each cycle. And that should work too. And it's a lot less code to write. Enter a name. I'll enter in SpongeBob, Patrick, then Squidward. We have SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward. When we print our names, let's also use a loop. We'll need another for loop. For int i equals zero. We'll continue while i is less than three, because that's the amount of rows that we have. Then increment i by one. During each cycle, we'll print names at index of i. And we can delete these print statements. Let's try that again. Enter a name, Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward. Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward. All right, last modification. What if we have four rows? We can fit four strings, each of 25 characters. Well, we would have to hard code this number for the for loops and change these to four. Rather than doing that, let's calculate the size of our array of strings. Let's say int rows. Let's get the size of our array, size of names, divided by one of the elements, size of one of the elements, names at index zero. The size of function returns the size in bytes. We're dividing that by the size of one of the elements, 25 bytes. Replace three with rows, and that can change. Now our array of strings has four rows. We should be able to enter in four strings. I'll add SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, and Sandy. There we go. We have SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, Sandy. All right, everybody, those are arrays of strings in C. They're kind of a pain in the ass, but it's an important topic. And well, everybody, those are a few ways in which you can work with an array of strings in C.